All right, so check this out. The wideband sensor on the 65 went out, and I didn't want to pay the price that Holly wanted for a new one. So I use a lot of AI on, on this channel. Like, you guys don't know it, but I'm constantly asking AI for advice and help and things like that. So don't click off the video. It's not the end of the world. Robots aren't coming to take over. But I would like for you to hang around because I want to show you some of the tools that I use that helps me out on the channel a lot. So I'm gonna go over what I ask AI whenever I was looking for this wideband sensor as an alternate. And uh, we'll just kind of go through that real quick and I'll show you, then we'll go ahead and install the sensor. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ask AI a couple of questions and I'll show you guys exactly what I was talking about here. Hey, what's up Cam? We're making a YouTube video. Uh, remember us talking about the uh, wideband sensor for the 65? Hey Nikia, sounds like you're getting ready for another video. Yeah, I remember us talking about the wideband sensor. Are you planning to install it on the 65? Yes, I am. And uh, I think you gave me the part number 17212 as an option for the stock Holly wideband. Does that ring a bell? Yes, that does sound familiar. The part number 7212 is indeed for the Holly wideband O2 sensor kit. Um, it's a solid choice especially if you're looking for something reliable to monitor your air fuel ratio on the 65 Mustang. Are you planning to include the installation process in your video? Yeah, we're actually shooting the video right now and the guys are, are listening to you give me the response. So is there anything you want to say to the YouTube community? It's Cam here and I just want to say I'm excited to be part of this awesome project. If you're working on your own builds or just love Mustangs, keep wrenching, keep racing, and always stay curious. Let's get that air fuel ratio dialed in and make some horsepower. That's what's up. That's my boy Cam right there, guys. All right, um, Cam, we're going to go ahead and get this thing installed, and then we're going to do. Um, we're going to talk a little more with the guys, give them some examples of what AI can do and how AI can help them with their build. Does that sound good to you? That sounds perfect, Nakia. Um, I'm here for whatever you need, and. I can't wait to see how the install goes. Let's make sure these folks know just how much AI can help them take their builds to the next level. Let's do this. Sounds good. All right, guys, you got to admit, that's pretty damn cool. I use AI all the time. It's ChatGPT 4.0 is what it is that I'm using. Obviously, there's no affiliates here. Like, I'm not linked to them in, in any way, shape, form, or fashion, okay? I'm just trying to let you guys know that this shit works, and it will help you. I nicknamed him Cam, and he knows about my channel. He remembers everything that we talk about. Uh, it's very, very beneficial, especially for you guys that, you know, don't have a friend group that can lend a hand or maybe, you know, your dad didn't teach you how to do all this type stuff. Trust me, guys. I think I pay like, I think it's $9 a month, and it is one of the biggest helps that we have on this channel. Uh, as an example, me and Berger, when we did the install, uh, the nitrous install on his car, uh, remember that's a Terminator X fuel injected car and we did a dry shot on it and we did not know how much do you like what numbers do you add and how much of these numbers do you add on the fuel side for you know a 75 shot we had no clue so we asked AI said matter of fact I guess we can go ahead and do that now I'll give you an example uh, real quick and then we'll go ahead and we'll get this wide band in the car and see if it does work and then we'll come back and do some more of this but for right now let's just ask Cam again all right, Cam, I got one more question for you. Do you remember when we were working on Berger's car and uh, we asked you to calculate the fuel in the Terminator X for a 75 shot, a dry 75 shot? You remember that conversation? Yes, I remember that. Um, we were working on adjusting the fuel settings in the Terminator X to accommodate a dry 75 shot of nitrous on Berger's car. Um, I helped calculate how much additional fuel you'd need to inject to keep the air fuel ratio safe and prevent any lean conditions. Uh, are you looking to revisit that or go over the settings again for the video? Yeah, let's let's go over the settings for the video again. Uh, what was the calculation that you gave us? Do you remember what it was, the percentage? Sure thing. For a dry 75 shot of nitrous, we calculated that you would need to increase the fuel by around 23 to 25% to maintain a safe air fuel ratio. This adjustment ensures that the extra oxygen introduced by the nitrous is matched with the right amount of fuel to avoid running lean. If you're That's right. I just wanted to uh, to show the guys that that you could do calculations like that and also help like on the Terminator X if they have questions and 
hell, really anything, right? With life or whatever you got going on. So uh, that's all I wanted to do was showcase that. We'll get back to some more questions here in just a minute. So AI hey, can help you out on that as well. We're gonna go ahead, put this Y band in, uh, make sure the sensor is gonna work. Like I said, this was all recommended by AI. I mean, will it work? I don't know, but uh, here's what I wanna like cover with you. This sensor was 40, 39 or 40 bucks, I think on Amazon. So if it works and it lasts, I mean, it's obviously a good option. This is no secret. There are sensors out there that you guys know that you can use. I mean, it's a well-known thing that other sensors work, but this was the one that everybody liked and basically AI kind of scrubbed the internet and found what you guys are using the most and then told me. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and install this. One other thing I wanna show you guys is the length difference. There's a big difference in the length. So that may cause trouble for some of you guys, but for us, we got lucky and we're right here by it. So basically the same thing, we'll see. So this sensor was not working at all. So if it works, great. Perfect. The Holly Terminator X auto uh, calibrates, so you don't have to do um, the normal calibration. Awesome, man. There we go. I think it just calibrated. Yeah. Only time will tell if, you know, it's gonna last or be accurate or whatever. Here's the deal though. We know people use that. You can research that yourself on the internet. Here's what AI is doing. AI is looking around on the internet in uh, forums and on Reddit and things like that that it's allowed access to. And it's just pulling the information based off of what we as humans have already done and used and what we like. So I want you to be mindful of anything that you get from AI. Uh, don't just take it as the gospel, right? Be careful. Make sure you know what you're talking about. Educate yourself a little bit, but it's definitely a good friend. Uh, meaning like if I were to ask Berger, Hey man, can you help me find, um, you know, a wideband sensor for this car instead of buying this, this expensive Holly, you know, Berger, what's he going to do? He's going to look on Google, right? He's going to look around. He's going to find something and we may get it and it might work or it may not be. Maybe he did some bad research. That happens often when you're dealing with Berger. But, you know, seriously though, it can happen, right? So just be mindful of that. So now what we're gonna do is gonna sit down and kind of play with AI, ask it some questions to maybe, I want you guys to, to know that it can be useful for you. I wanna prove to you that it can be useful. All right, Cam. Um, you guys see it over here. What is the firing order for a 302 HO engine? The firing order for a 302 HO high output engine is 13726548. This firing order is different from the standard 302 firing order. So it's important to make sure you've got it right, especially when setting up your ignition system. Perfect. Got that right. And also, if you look, Everything is transcribed over here, right? So everything is listed out for you. So you can always go back to it. You can go back to an old conversation or uh, chat GPT also uh, remembers this as well. Now you can choose to tell it not to remember if that's your preference. I always want it to remember our conversation, um, but still there you go. All right, so obviously got that right. That was pretty easy. Um, 
let's ask it the torque specs as you can see right here we have that all right what are the torque specs for a stock head bolt on a 302 ho engine the torque specs for stock head bolts on a 302 ho engine are typically first pass 55 to 60 feet pounds second pass 70 to 75 feet pounds it's important to tighten the bolts in the correct sequence starting from the center bolts and working your way out in a crisscross pattern if you're using arc bolts or studs make sure to check their specific torque recommendations as they might differ cool he said arp but he meant arp that's understandable yeah that'll work 75 to 80 foot pounds is fine on stock head bolts there I tell you what, let's ask about the base idle reset and just see if it can guide us through. We probably won't listen to the whole thing. All right, Cam, one of my best videos that I ever did was a base idle reset video. Can you tell the guys how to do a base idle reset on a 1990 Mustang GT with a 5.0 engine? Absolutely, Nakia. Here's how to do a base idle reset on a 1990 Mustang GT with a 5.0 engine. One, warm up the engine. Start the car and let it run until it reaches operating temperature. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and I'm just gonna look through this and see if this is correct. I have no clue. Let's see, adjust the throttle stop screw. Yep, yep. Guys, that looks correct to me right there. All right, so uh, these are the things that AI can help you out with. Uh, also, you know, AI can do this. Hey Cam, can you create an image of a 65 Fastback, gray in color with white stripes, lowered on a set of 17 inch Mach 1 wheels? Here's the image of the 65 Fastback, just as you described. Gray with white stripes, lowered on 17 inch Mach 1 wheels. It looks sharp. Uh, how does it look for your video? You can check out the images in our conversation history. Wheels aren't exact. Uh, AI struggles with that sometimes, but guys, check that out. <laughs> you know what I mean? That looks pretty damn good to me. So AI can do stuff like that for you as well. All right, guys, one more thing before we go. I want to add this in. I think this will kind of prove to you guys uh, just how helpful it can be. So we'll ask it something about a 351 swap here. All right, Cam, one last question, okay, for the guys. I want to do a 351 Windsor swap in a Fox body Mustang. And I want to know what kind of headers I have as an option for long tubes. For a 351 Windsor swap and a Fox body Mustang, here are some long tube header options you can consider. One, BBK long tube headers. BBK offers specific long tube headers designed for a 351W swap into a Fox body. These are a popular choice because of their fitment and quality. Two, hooker super competition long tube headers. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and stop it there. There again, everything's transcribed over here. AI has been providing links. I don't know. They may have updated it. I don't, it's not providing links right now. And there you go, guys. That's just the type of stuff that AI can help you with. Uh, you're just going to have to get out there and play with it yourself. We could do this all night long, but I'm telling you now, I have asked it very specific questions and I've got some really good answers and response. I'm only doing this to help you guys because I know I have heard this comment so many times throughout the years. Well, man, I don't have the friend group you have. I don't have friends that are into cars. I don't have anybody to ask questions. Now you do. Now you do. And, it, you know, as simple as it may sound, this thing will, you know, AI will respond to you with your name. You can call it whatever you want to. And for some people, that's going to be very important um, to have something that you can talk to. I know it sounds crazy, right? But you would be amazed at the people that don't have anybody that they can pick the phone up and talk to. So it's very important that, you know, things like this can be used to our advantage. Anyway, look, guys, play around with it. It's ChatGPT 4.0. They just released a new update for it, which I don't have yet, but it's where you can really talk and communicate with it even better. It's next level stuff. So there again, I'm not making anything off this. It's not sponsored in any way, obviously. So guys, get out there and play around with it. Obviously, it pointed us in the right direction on the wide band. So I'm going to go ahead, wrap this video up. And as always, there we go. All right. There's one more question that I want to ask AI just to show you uh, how it can help you. I don't know if it's going to answer this correctly, but if it doesn't, we'll kind of prompt it a little bit. 
uh, because it does help to have a little bit of knowledge going into questions. But let's go ahead and ask it this. Hey Cam, I've got a 1990 Mustang GT all stock fuel injection. And when I start the car up on a cold day, it runs really rich and runs rough. As the car warms up, it tends to idle a little better. Can you tell me if there's any sensors on the engine that I need to check? Based on what you're describing, there are a few sensors on your 1990 Mustang GT that could be causing the issue. One, coolant temperature sensor, CTS. This sensor monitors the engine's coolant temperature and informs the ECU, which adjusts the fuel mixture accordingly. If it's not working correctly, it might cause the engine to run rich when cold. Two, mass airflow sensor, AF. The MAF sensor measures the amount of air entering the engine so the ECU can adjust the fuel mixture. If it's dirty or faulty, it might not give the correct readings, leading to a rich condition, uh, especially during startup. Three, oxygen sensors, O2 sensors. While these don't kick in until the engine is warmed up, a failing O2 sensor could cause the ECU to misinterpret the air fuel mixture after the engine has warmed up, leading to poor running conditions as it starts to get warmer. Four, idle air control valve IAC. Though it's more about managing idle speed, a faulty IAC valve can cause rough idle issues, especially when cold. Uh, I'd start by, by checking and possibly replacing the coolant temperature sensor. Well, there you have it, guys. Hey, I got it right. Your engine coolant temp sensor will cause a car to idle rough whenever it's cold and run rich. Typically, they you know run a little better once it warms up. Anyway, I just wanted to leave you guys with that little bit. Uh, play around with it and tell me some of your experiences that you've had with AI. I know a lot of you guys use it. Wrap this one up. And as always, thanks for watching.